Hello students and welcome to the lecture on fermenter and its types. The main objectives of today's lecture are to precisely understand the fermenter and its history, to help students understand the component parts of fermentation process and the attributes of the fermenter, to have an overview about the construction and design of fermenters, to have a brief discussion on ideal fermenter, to discuss in brief types of bioreactors. To begin with, let me first give you a brief introduction about the topic fermenter or bioreactor. Fermenter or bioreactor is a closed vessel with advocate arrangement for aeration, agitation, temperature and pH control and drain or overflow when to remove the waste biomass of cultured microorganisms along with their products. A fermenter is used for commercial production in fermentation industries and is a device in which a substrate of low value is utilized by living cells or enzymes to generate a product of higher value. Fermenters are extensively used for food processing, fermentation, waste treatment, etc. Let's begin with a brief history of fermenters. The first large-scale fermenter for the production of yeast was first used by D.B.'s and Leibman in 1944. But it was during the First World War, a British scientist named Jane Wesman in 1914 to 1918 developed a fermenter for the production of acetone. For the first time, large-scale aerobic fermenters were used in Central Europe in the year 1930s. The first pilot fermenter was erected in India at Hindustan Antibiotic Limited, Pimri Pune in the year 1950. Now, let us start with the first part of our topic, the component parts of a fermentation process. Regardless of the type of fermentation, an established process may be divided into six basic component parts. Number one, the formulation of media. Number two, the sterilization of the medium. Number third, the production of an active pure culture in sufficient quantity to inoculate the production vessel. Number fourth, the growth of the organism in the production fermenter under optimum conditions for product formation. Number fifth, the extraction of the product and its purification. And number sixth, the disposal of effluents produced by the process. Here, it's mandatory to discuss the basic attributes of a fermenter. The main function of a fermenter is to provide a controlled environment for the growth of microorganisms or animal cells to obtain a desired product. In designing and constructing a fermenter, a number of points must be considered. Number one, the vessel should be capable of being operated aseptically for a number of days and should be reliable in a long-term operation. Number two, advocate aeration and agitation should be provided to meet the metabolic requirements of the microorganism. Number third, power consumption should be as low as possible. Number four, a system of temperature control should be provided. Number fifth, a system of pH control should be provided. Number six, sampling facilities should be provided. Number seven, evaporation losses from the fermenter should not be excessive. Number eight, the vessel should be designed to require the minimal use of labor in operation, harvesting, cleaning and maintenance. Number nine, ideally, the vessel should be suitable for a range of processes, but this may be restricted because of contaminant regulations. Number 10, the vessel should be constructed to ensure smooth internal surfaces. Number 11, the cheapest materials which enable satisfactory results to be achieved should be used. Number 12, there should be advocate service provisions for individual plant. Now moving on to the second part of our topic, the construction of fermenters. In fermentation, with strict aseptic requirements, it's important to select materials that can withstand repeated steam sterilization. Two basic types of fermenters are used. Number one, a glass vessel with a rounded flat bottom and a top flanked carrying plate. All vessels of this type have to be sterilized by autoclaving. The largest practical diameter for glass fermenter is 60 cm. Number two, a glass cylinder with stainless steel top and bottom plates 
These fermenters may be sterilized in situ, but 30 cm diameter is the upper size limit to safely withstand working pressures. Design of fermenters. All bioreactors deal with heterogeneous systems dealing with two or more phases, example liquid, gas, solid. Chemical engineering principles are employed for design and operation of bioreactors. A bioreactor should provide the following. Number one, agitation for mixing of cells and medium. Number two, aeration, that is aerobic fermenters for oxygen supply. Number third, regulation of factors like temperature, pH, pressure, aeration, nutrient feeding, liquid level, etc. Number four, sterilization and maintenance of sterility and withdrawal of cells or medium for continuous fermenters. Now, moving on to industrial fermenters. Industrial fermenters can be divided into two major classes, anaerobic and aerobic. Most industrial fermentation process is aerobic. The construction of a typical aerobic fermenter is the following. Number one is the cooling jacket. The fermenter is fitted externally with a cooling jacket through which steam for sterilization or cooling water for cooling is run. Cooling jacket is necessary because sterilization of the nutrient medium and removal of the heat generated are obligatory for successful completion of the fermentation in the fermenter. Number two, aeration system. Aeration system is one of the most critical part of a fermenter. There are two separate aeration devices that are used to ensure proper aeration in a fermenter. These devices are sparger and impeller. The sparger is typically just a series of holes in a metal ring or a nozzle through which filter sterilized air passes into the fermenter under high pressure. The impeller, also called agitator, is an agitating device necessary for stirring of the fermenter. Number third, baffles. The baffles are normally incorporated into the fermenter of all sizes to prevent a vortex and to improve aeration efficiency. They are metal strips roughly one-tenth of the fermenter's diameter and attached radially to the walls. Number four, controlling devices for environmental factors. In any microbial fermentation, it is necessary not only to measure growth and product formation but also to control the process by altering environmental parameters as the process proceeds. For this purpose, various devices are used in a fermenter. Environmental factors that are frequently controlled includes temperature, oxygen concentration, pH, cell mass, level of key nutrients and product concentration. Now, let us discuss briefly the use of computer in fermenter. Computer technology has produced a remarkable impact in fermentation work in recent years. Integration of computers into fermentation systems is based on the computer's capacity for process monitoring, data acquisition, data storage and error detection. Modern fermenters are usually integrated with computers for efficient process monitoring, data acquisition, etc. Some typical online data analysis functions include the acquisition measurements, verification of data, filtering, unit conversion, calculations of indirect measurements, differential integration calculations of estimated variables, data reduction and tabulation of results, graphical presentation of results, process stimulation and storage of data. Now let us discuss the third part of today's topic that is an ideal fermenter body construction. Construction material differ with small scale, pilot and large scale. In small scale for vessel construction glass or stainless steel may be used. For pilot and large scale process stainless steel, mild steel, wood, plastic or concrete may be used as a vessel construction material. Any vessel used should not have any corners and smooth surface is essential. The construction material must be non-toxic and corrosion proof. Glass vessel, borosilicate glass. Type 1, glass vessel, round or flat bottom with top plate. It can be sterilized by autoclaving and the largest diameter is 60 cm. Type 2, glass vessel, flat bottom with top and bottom stainless steel plate. This type is used in in-situ sterilization process and the largest diameter 
30 centimeter. Stainless steel. Stainless steel is used as vessel construction material with certain following modifications. Thickness of vessel should be increased with scale. Side plates have lower thickness than top and bottom plates. Top and bottom plates are hemispherical to withstand pressures. Sealing. Sealing between top plate and vessel is an important criterion to maintain airtight conditions, aseptic and contaminant. The materials used for sealing may be fabric nitrile or butyl rubbers. Baffles. Baffles are metal strip that prevent vortex formation around the walls of the vessel. If needed, cooling coils may be attached to baffles. Aeration system or sparger. Sparger is a device for introducing air into fermenter for aeration. There are three types of sparger, viz. porous sparger, orifice sparger and nozzle sparger. Number one, porous sparger. Made of sintered glass, ceramics or metal. It's used only lab scale, non-agitated vessel. Number two, orifice sparger. Used in small stirred fermenter. It is a perforated pipe kept below the impeller in the form of crosses or rings. Number third, nozzle sparager. Mostly used in large scale. It is a single open, partially closed pipe positioned centrally below the impeller. When air is passed through this pipe, there is lower pressure loss and does not get blocked. Exit gas cooler. Similar to Liebig condenser, condenses the moisture from the exhaust gas in the fermenter. This removes as much moisture as possible from the gas, leaving the fermenter and prevent excess fluid loss. Styrer glands and bearings. The entry point of styrer into fermenter may be from top to bottom or sides, mostly used from bottom so that it leaves more space for entry ports on top. There are four types of styrer glands and bearings. Number one, stuffing box. Number two, mechanical seal. Number third, magnetic drives. Number four, simple bush seals. Valves and steam traps. The different models of valves are number one, opening and closing, raising or lowering of blocking unit. Gate valve, globe valve, piston valve, needle valve, check valves, pressure control valves. Safety valve. There are two types of safety valve by which the increase in pressure is released. Number one, a spindle lifted from its seating against the pressure releases pressure. Number two, bursting or rupturing of discs to release pressure. Steam traps. This steam trap is important to remove any steam condensate. There are two components with valve and seat, assembly and open close device. Now let us discuss the last part of today's lecture that is the types of bioreactor. The various types of the bioreactor include number one, continuous styled tank bioreactor, number two, air lift bioreactor, number third, fluidized bed bioreactor, number fourth, packed bed bioreactor, number fifth, photo bioreactor, number sixth, membrane bioreactor. Now let us discuss them one by one. Number one, continuous tired tank bioreactor. In this bioreactor, the contents of the vessel no longer vary with time. This applies to the hold up of the microorganisms and the concentration of the components of the medium in the fermenter. The most successful continuous systems to date have been those employing yeasts and bacteria in which the desired products are the cells or primary metabolites, compounds that form the chemical inventory of a microbe example enzymes and amino acids or some products clearly associated with growth or energy producing mechanisms example the production of alcohol the most widely used continuous process based on cstf that is continuous stirred tank fermenter is the activated sludge process used in waste water treatment industry number 2 Airlift bioreactor. Airlift bioreactors can provide an attractive alternative to stirred tanks, 
particularly for bioprocesses with gaseous reactants or products. This kind of fermenter works on the principle of an airlift pump. It's of two kinds, internal loop type and external loop type. Number third, fluidized bed bioreactor. This is a characteristic of beds of regular particles suspended in an upflowing liquid stream. If an additional gas phase is involved, there is a tendency for the particles in the bed to become less evenly distributed. There are two important features of the beds of mixed particle sizes. Number one, the increase in porosity from the bottom to the top of the bed and number second, the decreased particle movement when compared with beds containing particles of constant size. Number fourth, packed bed bioreactor. Packed bed or fixed bed bioreactor commonly used with attached biofilms, especially in waste water engineering. The immobilized biocatalyst is packed in the column and fed with nutrients either from top or from bottom. Though Packed beds belong to the class of plug flow reactors in which back mixing is absent in many of the packed beds. Slight amount of back mixing occurs which changes the characteristics of fermentation. The packed bed reactors are widely used with immobilized cells. Several modifications such as tapered beds to reduce the pressure drop across the length of the reactor, inclined bed, horizontal bed, Rotary horizontal reactors have been tried with limited success. Number fifth, photobioreactor. Photobioreactors are used for precise phototrophic cultivation of algae and cyanobacteria. Phototrophic bioreactors are equipped with a flat vessel design that enables bringing uniform illumination over the whole volume of cultivated culture. Number sixth, Membrane bioreactor. Membrane bioreactors successfully applied to various microbial bioconversions such as alcoholic fermentation, solvents, organic acid production, wastewater treatment, etc. In membrane bioreactor, the soluble enzyme and substrate are introduced on one side of ultra flitter membrane by means of a pump and the product is forced out through the membrane. Membrane holds back the enzyme and a good mixing in the reactor can be achieved by using a stirrer. The most widely used membrane materials include polysulfonate, polyamide and cellulose acetate. Dear students, that's all about today's program. Hope you have understood and enjoyed well. Thank you and goodbye.